I'm live. Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to this very short and sweet class where I will be discussing something which I have probably been talking about the entire year but now that your exams are close by and I'm sure that many of us teachers would have already told you but nonetheless to make sure that I repeat it one more time we are going to be discussing on how to write the science board paper and what are some effective paper presentation skills that you can keep in mind when you are writing the examination. So I hope that all of you are excited for this class. So very quickly students, let me know since this is a live class, please do let me know if my audio, my video and my screen and whatever I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, give me a quick thumbs up. Now many of you here are from 10th grade, you are going to be giving your board exams. Many 9th grade students are also here, it will be beneficial for you. Just that I might not be giving you examples which are targeted towards 9th graders. So then don't feel bad, okay? Yes. Now see when it comes to paper presentation, I'd like to keep the session as short as possible. Which means that if I wind the session up in... 15 minutes, max to max, 20 minutes. That's all we need to discuss paper presentation skills, right? Because by now, a lot of you have already given so many pre-board exams that you know what should be won and what, sh what should be done and what shouldn't be done. But despite the fact that all of you have given your pre-board exams, there are these one, two places where you don't really understand why you're losing marks or where your teacher has cut marks for you or what went wrong. So this may seem like a very redundant session because it's pretty, I've discussed this for the previous batch as well, but I would like to pick up some important pointers that I'd like all of you to keep in mind. So again, like I said, I'm not going to be calling out names in the live chat, don't feel bad. We'll be taking some doubts towards the end, but I need your utmost focus for the next say 10 to 15 minutes that we're going to be here, okay? Awesome. Now every year, right, every year from CBSC, they release a topper's answer sheet, right? I'm sure a lot of you would have seen this where they release a topper's answer sheet. Now, topper's answer sheet, they will show you how exactly are the answers written. But the issue with last year's thing is it looks something like this where they, they've edited it in a way there is question and then there's answer and it is coming side by side, which is why... This is last year's topper's answer paper, but I'm not going to be really using the topper's answer paper, but I'll be using not the last year's topper's paper, but I'll be using the previous year for that. Now, students, when you are writing answers, right? Right now, whether it's for science exam or whether it's for SST exam, there are a few generic things to keep in mind, things that you already know, but I'm going to reiterate. First and foremost, ensure that when you are writing, Use a proper pen, right? Starting number one, right? First and foremost, make sure that all of you here are using a proper pen. Don't use black pen. Use blue pen. Preferably use a ballpoint pen over a gel pen. But if you feel like your handwriting looks better in a gel pen than the ballpoint pen, carry minimum of three to four pens to the exam hall, right? Because when you are using that, when you're using a gel pen, you can run out of ink, which is why I don't have just one or two, keep three or four. I used to write with a gel pen for my board exam and I used to have four pens at all times. So stock up on all the pens right now and keep it ready. Secondly, when you are structuring the answer, right? When you are structuring the answer and you are writing it, start with the number on the other side of the margin. Now, this is something as a teacher I would personally prefer and of course what I believe are the tips that I have used for my good paper presentation skills. Because when I was a child and when I was in school, my teachers commended me for the way my paper was presented. Which is why if you see, always make sure that the numbering is on the other side of the margin, right? So start your numbering here as 1 sub part A and then you write the answers. Yes? So as you can see, step number one is if there is no margin, then draw a margin, right? Draw a margin and for science when there is physics calculation, make sure you draw a rough space, right? Keep one side of the paper ready for rough work or rough space as it. So then you can draw one on this side. 
and draw this line with a pencil. Don't use a pen at any point. When you are drawing margins, when you are drawing the rough space, use a pencil and pencil only. It makes things neat, right? So first and foremost, make sure that you write it on the other side of the margin. Now in science, it is preferred that you write answers in points. Now when you are writing points, you can use bullet points or you can use subparts 1, subparts 2, subpart 3, right? You can write it in this manner and you can list the pointers down. And wherever you need to have supporting diagram, right? Wherever you need to draw diagrams, please draw the diagrams and support it, yes? Support it so that it looks neat. Now, in this particular case, if you see, this is an ideal example of a paper where you see that the numbering is done on the other side of the margin, on the left side of the margin. There is a supporting diagram given to you and the steps are mentioned. So, make it a point that all of you, right, all of you write the steps down and when you get the final answer, right, when you get the final answer, especially for physics, when you are calculating it, Use a box, right, to highlight it or if you get, let's say, 40 ohms as the answer, underline it with two, put two lines underneath it, yes? Now, yes, boom it, it could be, right? I completely agree, but these are ways in which you and I can learn, right? Things that we need to keep in mind when I am writing the paper. See, this is how we learn, yes? So, that is important. Ma'am, do we need to write section A, section B or section C? I will recommend that you write it. So, if you see here, can you see this? Write the section heading, right? Keep the section heading and make sure that you write it in chronology. So, here you have section 8, section 9. Now, imagine you want to do question number 8 and then question number 10. Don't make sure that you number it properly that this is section B, this is question number 10. And once you are done with the particular section, right, when you have come, imagine you have finished all 20 questions from section A. So, if this is your paper, right, if this is your paper and you have finished all the questions, assuming, okay, I want to take section C, right, section C may say you have finished all five or all, how many ever are there. Make sure that you conclude it by drawing a line as well. So, I would recommend that after every answer in subjective questions, Starting from section B, draw an underline and segregate your answers so that your teacher knows answer 1 in section B is here, answer 2 is here, answer 3 is here, answer 4 is here. When your teacher is correcting or when your board examiner is correcting, Aram says she will be able to correct. Looks neat, right? This looks neat. So this right here is very important when you are writing. Now always when you are Let's say drawing a line after an answer, use pencil, please don't draw with pen, it becomes very shabby, I don't recommend it, please use a pen, yes, I mean use a pencil. Now, I want to go back to whatever I have discussed, right, so starting with which, when you are going to get started, right, when you get started, what will you do, if margins are not there, draw margin. Draw one on this side as well. So you have a left side margin and a right side margin. Now many of you are asking me, ma'am, should I do calculations at the end of the paper or should I do it side by side? Now for those of you who are asking me, ma'am, why can't I do my rough work in the last page? You can do it, but I'll tell you why you will not, um, why I don't recommend that. Because of the fact that you make silly mistakes. See, when you are copying from one place to another, especially from this side to this side, in that stress and tension and everything, we tend to make some silly mistakes. 36 will become 63, then your whole answer goes wrong. Then if you, in case when you are rechecking it and you realize that you made a silly mistake, then you will get stressed out because sometimes maybe that might be towards the end of the paper. So, I would recommend that rough work should happen always towards the side. This is what I have done, right? This is what I have practiced and I am only giving you tips that I have used in my exam. I was master, I was a boss of making silly mistakes in math. I was a boss of making silly mistakes in physics. But how did I overcome my silly mistakes by doing this, right? Which is why, for example, when you are solving electricity-based numericals, 
you do the calculation here then there only you can side by side copy it right so first and foremost have a space for rough work the right side margin here is for your rough work now when you get started start with writing down the section heading so section a underline 1 2 3 4 how many ever right now again there are two things section a is your mcq based questions so when you're writing mcq based questions make it a point that all of you write the option see you can write only option that correct answer is a correct answer is b or you can write option with answer both are preferred right both are preferred next what kind of pen to use please use a blue pen don't use combination of pens don't use different colored pens don't use black and blue pen use the same type of pen right same type of pen only do not do permutation combinations in board exam not recommended right yes ma'am when will we do right in front okay well uh, front won't See, on the side when you are doing the calculation, don't use a pen and do the calculation. Use a pencil and do it, right? Use a pencil and do it. Now, secondly, what kind of pen to use? Gel or ball? Now, ball pens are recommended because in most cases what happens is that ball pens have a better durability. The ink lasts for a long period of time and some of the ball pens like Butterflow. So, I use Butterflow, right? Even for office work and everything, I use Flare, Butterflow and all of that. They are smooth writing. So, what happens is that there are some ball pens when you press and write. Some students have a uh, habit of pressing and writing. So, when you press and write, there is an embossment. There is like a print that comes on the back and it looks little shabby. So, in such cases, try to use ball pens which don't leave a mark on the other side. But in case, like in my case, if you look at my handwriting in ball pen and gel pen, I write better in gel pen than ball pen. My handwriting looks much neat. Which is why in my board exam, I have used a gel pen only because my handwriting looks better. But if you are taking gel, make it a point that all of you carry 4-5 gel pens. Ballpoint pen, take 2 and go. And again, most ballpoint pens are waterproof, so it's a safer option. Gel pens are a slightly riskier option, right? Don't, no, no black pen for highlighting, nothing. Use a pencil only, right? So when you're writing the answer, use a pencil for underlining the, underlining the headings. Or once you are done with, let's say, question number 20, do a final underline for the section. Yes? Okay. So this is what we have covered so far. Are you all with me on this? Very simple and easy, right? Very simple and easy. Now, should we draw diagrams even when they are not asked? Now, in cases, draw diagrams only if it supports the answer. For example, if you have a 5 mark question on double circulation, draw the diagram, draw the flow chart. If you have a question which is based on, let's say, an electricity numerical like this, draw the diagram because it makes things more neat, right? So, that is something that I would definitely recommend. Now, of course, these are all the important pointers that you need to keep in mind. Next up, underline keywords, right? Now, two more things. Underline the keywords. Now, this is something I don't see in this, but you can do this not while writing the answer. So, when I would write my examination, what I will do? I'll write the entire paper and I will have like 5 to 10 minutes where I am checking the paper. And that is something you have to keep towards the end that you have 5 to 10 minutes to check your answers. And especially in science, in that 5 minutes, take a scale underline it with pencil and pencil only keywords you can highlight and underline with pencil yes so this is very very important right next up what if you don't know the answer now you are writing so you have your paper here with you you have your paper you have your paper with you you have drawn everything you are you have started with section b Right? Or let's say section C. You are let's say in question number 25 or 20, no, 28. You don't know the answer to question number 29. 28 ho gaya, 29 ka answer pata nahi hai. So what are we going to do? Are we going to leave some estimated amount of space and say in this much space I will write the answer. Then come back and then start with 20, uh, 30. Or 
shall I start with question number 30 here and towards the end I will write it. What will you do? What will you do? So now you are going in order. Till question number 29 you knew all the answers. Question number 30 ka answer pata nahi hai. What will you do? Are you going to leave place? Yes. I would again not recommend ink pen during examination because if the ink gets over, ink gets very messy. Please don't use ink pens. Leave space. Move on. See, this is again an option which I leave to students, right? This is something I leave to students because one is if I were me, I will not leave place. I'll tell you why. Because I don't know how much space I would require. So, some kids what they do is, imagine if I've written here section C ka first bit, right? Section C ka first part, I have written question number 29, all the answer I've written. What they will do, they'll leave the remaining entire place to write the answer. You could do that. Or a more neater way of presenting is continue with question number 31, 33, go with it. And in the end, write all the answers that you don't know. But... If you are going to do this technique that I follow where I write it in the end, you need to keep it in mind that heading and question number should be mentioned. So section B ka question number 21, I didn't know. Then this is section C ka question number 30. Then this was section E ka one question. So if you write the heading and the question number properly, you are good to go. But if you feel ki ma'am isme mein galti karunga, zaroor karunga, then leave place and do it. Right? So that is something that you can keep in mind. Mania, if you have the habit of making mind maps towards the end, do it in pencil and then you can do it. Right? That's just a small thing that you do which you can. But rough work, calculation, I recommend it side by side. See, end is what I prefer. Less janjat. That's what I would always say. Now, next up. Money is asking me, which is exactly what I was going to say. What if I make a mistake? Now, here if you see, here our friend who is a topper has made a mistake. Now, what has he or she done? He or she has not used a whitener. Students, please don't take whitener and go. Whiteners are not allowed. You cannot use whitener. You cannot use fancy, uh, you know, highlighters, nothing fancy. Please don't take fancy things and go. Don't take smart watches and go. They are not... They are all not allowed, right? So in particular case, what will you do when you don't or if you have gone wrong? Or imagine that this whole question was done wrong. Don't sit and scratch every word. Take your pen and do one big scratch like this and like this. And then you take a pencil, underline it and then continue starting again if the whole question is wrong. But... If one sentence is wrong, if let's say one word spelling mistake ho gaya, then scratch it. Don't do chik 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 like that. No. Don't sit and scratch like this. Just one clean cut with the pen is more than enough. Or backup sake, do two cuts as he or she has done. Enough. Don't sit and scratch and do one design there. We don't want that, right? You don't need to erase rough work later. You can keep the rough work because your examiner will know that you have done the rough work. Which is why this right here is important. So when you go or when you make a mistake, please make it a point that all of you have a look. Now last but not the least, right? Last but not the least to quickly summarize what I've told you. Make sure that your paper is neat. Nobody is asking you to write with calligraphy handwriting. See, all students don't have a very, you know, fancy, fancy handwriting. Some students have a fancy, you know, very good handwriting, very neat handwriting. Everything is, you know, when you look at it only, it looks aesthetic. But you might be somebody whose handwriting is only so-so. Does not mean that you feel bad and say, Arey ma'am, my handwriting doesn't look very pretty. It doesn't look like a font. So what will I do, right? Will, will they cut marks for my handwriting because it doesn't look good? They won't cut marks for all that. But... Your handwriting should be legible, right? So what do I mean by legible? It means that whatever you write, it should be clear. So if I'm writing my name Aishwarya, right? You should know that this is A, I, the words or the letters should be clear in whatever handwriting you do. Next up, 
make sure that it answers are written point wise right make it point wise and of course like i said underline the keywords and space your words very very important apart from legible handwriting the next biggest mistake i see sometimes is that there is an issue with spacing so let me give you an example so when you are writing let's say a sentence on double circulation right so let's say that you are writing a sentence on the left atrium pumps oxygenated blood to different parts now can you see this handwriting are you able to make up the words are you all able to make up these words right are you all able to understand this yes or no see you are not able to make things out clearly secondly there is no proper spacing in between right there is no proper spacing in between now in such cases it becomes difficult for your examiner now how do board examiners correct i am sure you guys must be wondering right now you guys must be wondering how board examiners actually correct your papers what are the things that they keep in mind all of you hear different different things from different different people which is why tomorrow we're going to have one more short class with ankita ma'am because ankita ma'am herself is a official board corrector she has gone in her early days she has gone minimum 2 3 times to the board center and she's corrected board papers so you are going to hear it from a board examiner herself as to what are the things that you guys need to keep in mind and what are the things the board examiner will have a look at which is why all your misconceptions that people will tell you about ki they will look for this they will look for that or they will look for this all that ankita ma'am is going to clarify and she's going to come and she's going to discuss it with you so these misconceptions on what board examiners are going to look at i will tell you yes next up when you are see one thing that i know for a fact is that if your handwriting is not spaced out if your let if your words are not spaced out properly they are going to cut it right and more importantly for people like for me my r and my v look the same because i used to write r like this so people who have these issues with r and v e and o right and then of course sometimes i also see it with h and l so the way they write h and l will all look the same right there are many students who struggle with this if you are one of them right if you are one of them if you are like me then please please work on it right please be careful because unnecessarily why will you want to cut the marks see s and r all ah many will come now ma'am it's s n r h n l i know yes so this right here is going to be very important that all of you for where you make these silly mistakes you focus on that right so apart from this like i said these are some basic pointers that you will have to follow now these are not things that are new to you many of us have told you this many of us have told us that this is what you need to follow and this is how you need to go but apart from that things to keep in mind is that make sure that you're not scribbling scratching and making it look untidy proper numbering of questions right now again many of you are saying can we mark on question paper please don't mark in the question paper sometimes they may think you're doing cheating and all so no marking anything on the question paper everything is in the mind yes secondly make sure that whenever you need a diagram you draw the diagram provided draw it with pencil please don't draw it with pen and make it untidy next up formulas and equations right chemical equations all the equations that you have in chemistry all the formulas needed write them down if you are using a formula to find current or you are using a formula to find resistance write the formula down because see later on what happens is that that step wise i'm sure math also kushbu ma'am would have told you when you structure an answer that gives the examiner a feel that you know what you are writing see whatever in between if you let me tell you worst case some one two points idhar udhar ho gaya examiner will get a feel that ha huh, this kid knows it right so that is why i will always tell you that make it clean neat and structured don't outline with pen no nothing with pen yes i got distinction sunil i got distinction ma'am capital letter or cursive cursive hand see write your normal handwriting but don't write it use your normal running handwriting that is there please don't write it in caps and all of that right 
Okay. Asma is asking me, which section do I recommend starting the science exam with? I would recommend, see there are two ways. If you are first and foremost, when you get the paper, when you go through the questions itself, you will realize how much you know and how much you don't know. And often, for 99% of the students, they know 75% of the paper already. Right? They know 75% of the paper. So when you are using 75%, when you know 75%, attempt that first, starting with section A. Then you go to the questions that you don't know so that you are able to spend more time on the questions. So that is how you manage your time. Yes? Don't use black pen. Please. Okay. Boomit. Bacha, send it to me one last time. Ma'am, pencil say section likna hai. Nahi. Pencil say underline the section heading. Everything else with pen. Yes. How many points to write for each marks? See, there will be word limit and everything written. Very difficult to constrain yourself with word limit. But two points, maximum three points for two marks. Maximum, I'm telling you. Five mark pointers normally if there are subheadings. So for five mark questions, for example, if it's question number 35 or let's say question number 33. Yes, there'll be sub parts. So make sure you write 33A. Then when you're going to 33B, reiterate it so that you all know what you are writing. Yes? Okay. Ma'am, what to do if writing is not good? Pooja, they are not going to cut marks if you are writing. See, good or bad is a personal thing that we consider, right? Good or bad is something that we personally consider. It's all about whether it is legible. Can I read what you are writing? Does it make sense? If your handwriting, if you feel, ma'am, it could be more legible during your gap days or when you are writing or when you are solving, Make sure that you write and practice so that your handwriting becomes a little big, right? Or a little better. But good or bad is subjective. Bhumit is asking me, can I solve from reverse? You can as long as you are writing it, writing the section headings and everything properly. See, that differs from person to person also. But see, if you want to do it in reverse, you can do it in reverse. But if your question number and your subparts are all mentioned, your sections are mentioned, nobody is going to say anything. No using, see I recommend that you don't use black pen anywhere. Use pencil to underline. Why do we want to do all this multicolor business? Pen, blue pen, pencil. Enough. Simple. Okay. So are we all clear students? I wanted to take a very short and sweet session on this. I didn't want to make it very complicated. So quickly to summarize. To summarize whatever we have learned. First and foremost, right, when we attempt the paper, what are we going to do? If margin is not there, I'm going to draw my margins, yes? Then when, of course, I will get started, I will write the section heading, right? So this is section A, I'm going to write with 1, 2, 3. Make sure that the numbering is on the left side of the margin. Any rough work will happen on the right side, yes? Then, of course, once I finish every answer, let's assume section A and I've moved on to section B. So I'm in section B and I'm in say question number 21. I have written the answer for this. After this answer, I'm going to draw and I'm going to underline. Now you cannot, in case if you feel ma'am, you time waste here to keep underlining after every answer that I write. I'll tell you one more trick. After you write say question number 21 ka answer, leave two lines and start with question number 22. Give enough spacing. There should be enough space between two answers, right? Last may underline it with the pencil. But in the meanwhile, as you all are writing, make sure that you give a two finger space, right? Or two line space between the two. Yes. Then of course, you will write da -da 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 -da, underline and then go to the next. So make sure that you underline after every answer. If not, give the spacing between two answers. What if you don't know a particular answer? You can leave place. I don't mind that. If you feel, ma'am, I've been doing this. I've been leaving place and that's how I have practiced. Go ahead and do it. But if you are somebody who says, I will move on to the next question and write it towards the end, that is also recommended, right? Okay. Extra sheets, they will provide you. Okay. So with this, of course, when you are writing, uh, when you are writing the answers, make it a point that the answers are legible, words are clear, 
right all the words that you are writing are clear you can easily read them and of course underline your keywords right underline keywords and make sure that you use a pencil only to underline use a pencil to draw any diagrams do not use black pen no black pen over and over i am referring to it yes okay yes ma'am should we leave line by writing mcq i will again recommend that leave one line spacing between because it gives a more see it makes readability better so if you want i'll send you a picture of a very old seventh grade paper of mine because all my 10th grade papers are missing so my seventh grade paper if you see you can see how there is a gap between each of it right so i will send a paper of mine it could either be my college papers or my you know school papers i will send it on the telegram channel so that you get an idea of how it needs to look like yes okay gel pen is allowed bachcha but see again depends on you right okay i am not sending i will see what paper i have at home so with the students again like i said to end with this don't stress do your best forget the rest once the exam is over you can't change anything but before the exam and when you are writing the exam everything is in your control so from today because today marks the beginning official beginning of your board exams 2024 which is why now is the time when the seriousness has kicked in when we want to you know start preparing well for it and i am sure that we want to give in our 100% which is why students for the upcoming days we have all the sessions planned out and spaced out for you so all you need to do in the next few days is to practice 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 right so everybody do not worry but yes now is the time to get very 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 serious every minute counts right how many inches margin use the scale and keep it for rough side you can take a little more than the width of your scale more than enough yes okay Yes, schedule of the sessions will come out from next week, right? So next week onwards, the number of sessions that will happen happen for grade ten will reduce. We will most likely, if at all, we take classes, will be some premiered videos because you have your Hindi, you have your Hindi exam coming up, your English exam coming up. So we will try to take up a little more sessions which are lightweight. But from science exam onwards, you will get a scheduler. I will be putting up a video on how to study during gaps as well very soon, so that and most likely. be after your hindi exam so that you get an idea of how to use your gap days wisely yes okay so time management sessions as well see if you need a lot more strategy sessions let me know in the comments of this video what type of strategy sessions you would like more from our end some are already on their way but if you need more let us know the topics in the comments of this video and if you found this particular video helpful for your paper presentation then let me know in the comments as well right so students in the upcoming few days we are going to get into the grind of board exams and like i always tell you i will hold or we teachers will hold your hand till the very end of that finish line so if you trust us if you believe that learning with us is going to help you get that 95% in your board exam don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe more doubts i will take it in the comments but i will see you all soon tomorrow morning so tomorrow morning you have classes with us by 7 am you have class with um, khushbu ma'am and at 12 pm you have a menti with me for geography so tomorrow we have morning classes students so everybody we will be scheduling it on the channel very soon so plan your days so that we are going to ace your exam together right i know you're feeling nervous but we have got you covered so hoping to see you all soon again students take care lots of love to all of you and bye bye